It was a cold winter morning. A tugboat captain approached his boat. Something had struck on the boat's propeller the previous night in the Vistula River of Poland. He had to get it out before starting his day. He opened a hatch on the tugboat. He was unsure about the object he saw, but he knew it was something unusual. He was hit by a rotting smell, and then he saw what appeared to be a human hair. What had happened? Stick around and find out. It was later discovered that what the captain found were the remains of Katazania Zoada. The object found by the captain was her skin, neatly cut away at the thighs and neck, reaching only as far as the left ear and no face or arms. Her nipples were also absent. There was also a long cut going from under the right breast to the left shoulder. The coroner reported that the body had been in the water for an estimated two or three weeks before she was found. A leg was found near a dam, also on the river, among some floating garbage and tree branches a week later. No other remains of her have ever been found. So, who was she and what happened to her? Today, our case takes us in the European continent and in the country of Poland. It is located in Central Europe with a population of over 38 million. It is the sixth most populous member of the European Union. Poland has a rich history and culture that spans over a thousand years, including a monarchy that lasted from the 10th to the 18th century. Aside from its fascinating history, Poland is also known for its delicious cuisine, beautiful landscapes, and friendly people. Here are some fun facts about Poland. The Polish language is one of the most difficult languages to learn in the world, with complex grammar and over 32 letters in the alphabet. Also, a Polish astronomer, Nicholas Copernicus, was the first person to propose that the Earth revolves around the Sun and not the other way around. Warsaw, the capital of Poland, is also known as the Phoenix City because it was completely destroyed during World War II and then rebuilt from the ashes. A quick drive to the southern of Poland, you will find Krakow City, which is known for its beautiful architecture and culture. It is the second largest city in the country and is a popular tourist destination for its many attractions, which include historic Wawel Castle, the main market square, and the Jewish Quarter. One of Krakow's most notable landmarks is the Jagiellonian University, which is one of the oldest universities in the world, founded in 1364. It is also one of the most prestigious universities in Europe and has a long history of academic excellence. The university has produced many notable alumni including Nobel Prize laureates and several Polish presidents. Katarzyna Zawada was a Polish student at the Jagiellonian University who went missing on November 1998. Katarzyna was born on the 1st of June 1976 and her family and friends called her Cassia. She was an only child and was very close to her dad. Katarzyna never had many friends, only one or two close ones as she was an introverted person who did not open up easily. In January 1996, her father took her hiking. This is something they loved doing together. But tragedy struck when he slipped and fell. He suffered a spinal cord injury, which caused an illness that took his life. Katazania would never be the same again after losing her father. She blamed herself for his death and fell into depression. She lived with her mother Martha in Noah Huta a town that was built in the Soviet era. It is one of the only two socialist cities ever built. It was designed to be a utopian society with many green parks and grand buildings. She enrolled to study psychology at the university in Krakow, following the footsteps of her mother, who was a child psychologist. But it was not the correct choice for her. She then changed her course to history and eventually religious studies. Katazania also enjoyed reading science fiction novels and watching sci-fi movies, but most of all, she enjoyed listening to music. Her depression after her father's death concerned her mother. She insisted that Katazania went for therapy and her mother would meet her at the psychologist rooms to make sure that she attended her sessions. Katazania was reliable and also wanted help for her depression. She was always punctual and never missed her session. So, on November 12, 1998, when she did not show up for a 6 p.m. appointment, her mother was worried, and for good reasons. 
Later that day, Katazenia's mother attempted to file a missing persons report at the local police station but was told to wait and come back after 24 hours. What happened to her? Investigations into Katazenia's life uncovered some possible links to what had happened to her. Two weeks before her disappearance, she had skipped classes and disappeared before reappearing again. When her friends were asked about their possible boyfriends, one male acquaintance was the only person who fit the bill, and he had an alibi for the time of Katazania's death. While DNA has been discovered on Katazania's skin, no match was found when it was compared to suspects and people of interest that the police had. Nor was anything discovered when it was run through a list of known sex offenders. In May 1999, the forensic medicine unit in Krakow received a corpse of a man. The man's head was cut off and skinned. The killer, Vladimir, turned out to be the son of the victim. Before his arrest, he was seen in a mask made of skin, pulled from the head of his own father. Initially, investigators suspected that Vladimir committed Katazinia's murder. However, no evidence was found to support it. He was later charged with his father's murder and sentenced to 25 years in prison. After a few years, he was transferred to a prison in Russia at his own request. A year later, the investigation was formally dropped because the perpetrator had not been discovered. But the police officers involved in the case continued investigating credible leads. By the end of 2000, the case was called. Believe it or not, it was 12 years later when the next piece of evidence was found. The cold case unit of the Polish law enforcement had exhumed Katazinia's remains and discovered traces of a rare plant species that allowed them to more accurately pinpoint as to where the crime may have been committed. No one knew the identity of the killer. In 2017, a tip came in that would spark interest in the cold case and finally bring a suspect into custody. The cold case team, known as Archive X, used this breakthrough to push the case into the public's eye, where they were then helped by American and Portuguese forensic specialists. The FBI helped put together a psych profile of the killer and determined that Katazania had likely been badly beaten before being tortured and skinned alive. It is believed that she died of blood loss and was tragically alive to experience some of her killer's actions. The severity of Katazania's beating led investigators to believe that the killer was killed in martial arts. The person in question would possess a sadistic nature and enjoy harassing women. On the 4th of October 2017, Robert Jankowski was arrested by Polish police for the aggravated murder of Katazania Zawada. Robert had been a person of interest in the initial investigation, however, there was not enough evidence to arrest him at the time. He was a former employee at the Krakow Institute of Zoology. The 52-year-old was trained in martial arts and he knew the victim. He also visited her grave several times and had his history of harassing women. Robert was fired from his job the day after he killed all the rabbits in the institute and he could not explain why he killed the rabbits when asked. In 2022, Robert was sentenced to life imprisonment for the murder of Katazania. The trial was not open to the public, and his family still claimed that he is innocent and the verdict was based on circumstantial evidence. Nothing concrete. What do you think? Did he do it? Katazania Zawada was known by her friends as a shy, quiet, loving and kind young woman. She loved the grateful dead and was a big fan of the sci-fi and fantasy novels. May she rest in peace. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and thank you for watching to the end. Until next time, stay safe.